Blackmagic Design just released the much anticipated 7.3 update for the Pocket 6K Pro, 6K and 4K, as well as some of their other cameras. And there are a ton of updates from color science, false color, improved autofocus, and more that we're going to just jump straight in and talk about in this video today. Before we jump into this video, I wanted to take a second to invite you to be part of the Voyager community. Brain Voyager is all about finding cool stories to tell and helping you to find yours through our videos. And I love getting to talk with other filmmakers and storytellers that are already part of this channel. So be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep up to date with all of our content. Now, let's get back to the video. So let's quickly just list the updates in order for all of you quickly that want to just get through them all and know what they are. And then we'll go back around and look at how they work in the camera and I'll give a little bit more of an explanation. The first one is updates for all of the pocket cameras. Updated luminance histogram to an RGB histogram, added color channel clipping indicators, added a false color guide display, added an LCD calibration setting, improved autofocus and active lens control, improved focus peaking visibility, and they fixed an issue with importing LUTs and presets. Updates for the Pocket 4K and 6K. In both of these cameras, they've now added support for Generation 5 color science, added support for LCD dimming for power conservation, and added Q1 and Q3 Blackmagic RAW recording options. Um, for the Ursa Studio Viewfinder, they fixed a bug that can cause image misalignment. And what's new in Blackmagic RAW 2.0 that they also updated in this? I'll just go ahead uh, and list some of these here, but I'm probably not going to go into much detail on them in this video. For this, they added support for Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro 12K and added support for dual card recording. They also updated some of the Blackmagic 5 color science, added DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate Gamut support, added support for Nikon Z62 and Z72, and added general performance and stability improvements like all of these updates do. All right, let's quickly unpack all of these. The updates for the pocket cameras, um, the updated luminance and histogram to RGB histogram and added color channel clipping indicators. This adds, as the title indicates, an RGB histogram to all the pocket cameras, which is especially useful when trying to figure out what's going on in the shot and exposure levels, especially when it comes to color. Included with the histogram is indicators to the right of the histogram that will light up to let you know which colors are clipping in the image. All in all, this is an incredibly useful update for all the pocket cameras added a false color display. With this update, when you now turn on false colors, you will get a guide display to the right of the camera to better help you understand what each color and the false colors means on a scale. This is something that a lot of us questioned why they didn't already have this in the camera, as it seems like something that would be quite obvious to just have. And we've been asking for this for years. So, oh well, at least we finally got it after we figured out how to do it on our own. Added LCD calibration setting. Blackmagic has also added an LCD white balance calibration screen to help, as it says in the name, calibrate the LCD screen. I see this as probably a fixed issue a lot of Pocket 6K Pro users have been having with their new cameras with that has a strange blue tint to their displays. This is a solid update all around anyways, as you really want to know that your screen is properly calibrated and now you have the option to manually do it improved autofocus and active lens control. This will probably be something that I'll have to test out when I'm actually in film environments to see if I notice a difference over how it was before. So while improved autofocus is welcomed on this camera, I'll be interested to see if there's a marketable difference over how it was before the update. Improved focus peaking visibility. This is just an update to help better assist with the focusing of your pocket 4K cameras, to help better see the um, whether whatever color you have on your screens um, when you're focus peaking on the LCD screen. Updates for the Pocket 4K and 6K. Um, added support for Generation 5 Color Science. The long awaited move to Generation 5 Color Science is here. And that might be a good thing or bad thing depending on who you're talking to. This does fix some issues that many had with color grading in Gen 4 Color Science. And if you'd like to find out more about what it does and doesn't do, I've included a link in the description. Now, I'm not really a color grading expert per se, so I won't go into it, but I'll always direct you to someone else who does. Added support for LCD dimming for power conservation. There is now added support for screen dimming after a set period of time, and this can be found in the, the third tab of the setup menu. Added Q1 and Q3 Blackmagic RAW recording options, and honestly, this just adds more to the constant quality bitrate options, giving you more flexibility when it comes to storage space in more ways to set up your camera based on your situation. From what I can tell, Q1 has a bitrate range of 144 to 361 megabytes per second, and Q3 has a range of 96 to 241 megabytes per second. And if you'd like to learn more about what these different bitrate options are and how they work with the camera, I've included a link to one of our videos on it below, and one that I'm probably going to have to update now. 
Well, that's it for Black Magic Camera 7.3 update. If you feel like I said something wrong or missed something or just have a question in general, let me know in the comments below. As always, I'm happy to talk with you guys. Until next time, this is John Owens with Frame Voyager.